Today we're going to look at uh, the structure of hemoglobin and something called the uh, positive cooperativity, which is a very crucial thing that hemoglobin can do in order for them to uh, bind to oxygen and then hence to transport them. So uh, we'll start with the structure of hemoglobin. Now as you can see here, uh, there are a few things. Number one, we say the hemoglobin is a large globular conjugated protein. Uh, it's globular because of its shape. It's a globular protein which is mainly uh, indicating it's got a transport sort of um, function to it. So some of the other examples of globular proteins would be things like enzymes. Uh, whereas the other side would be a fibrous proteins which is more of a structural uh, protein uh, which enables them to do structural functions. It's also described as a conjugated protein because it is a protein that is bound to an inorganic group. So uh, in this case for hemoglobin, the inorganic group is the heme group which contains iron to it. And that's also why our blood appears red because iron itself is actually red in colour. And we say that they are made up of four subunits uh, in terms of the quaternary structure. And uh, you can see two of them will be alpha subunits and the other two will be uh, the beta subunits. And each subunit will have one single heme group and they each can bind to one oxygen molecule. Therefore, we say that each hemoglobin would be able to bind to maximum four oxygen molecules. And you can see that this is what we call the hemoglobin and when it's bound to the oxygen here, we call it a oxyhemoglobin. So sometimes we might represent it like this, so Hb as hemoglobin and then O2 brackets 4 because it's bound to 4 oxygen molecules. So that is oxyhemoglobin. Notice how the oxygen is bound to the heme group itself because that's exactly the, um, the, the part of the hemoglobin that binds to the oxygen and not to other parts uh, of the hemoglobin. And we say that oxygen can show something called positive cooperativity, which means that uh, when the first oxygen molecule binds the hemoglobin, that binding would cause the hemoglobin to change its shape. And it changes its shape in such a way that allows the other subunits to um, bind to the next oxygen even easily, e even more easily. So uh, the structural changes to it, uh, it's almost like opening up the subunits a bit more, enabling uh, easier binding for the next oxygen molecule. And we use this phrase, we say it increases the hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. The word affinity it refers to, um, you can think of it as attraction. So uh, how how likely or how easily is it, for, uh, is it for the hemoglobin to bind to the oxygen? So we say increasing its affinity. So now we'll have a look at the mechanism of positive cooperativity. So in the beginning we have the subunits which have a very low affinity for uh, oxygen. And then eventually one of the oxygen molecules were able to bind to one subunit here. But then, as you can see, it subsequently changed the shape of the hemoglobin uh, subunits, um, as indicated by the different color here. And they changed the shapes of the uh, subunits, making them easier to bind to the next oxygen molecule, so meaning that we've got a higher affinity there. So at this stage, we say that we are about 25% saturated in terms of oxygen. And then because these two uh, subunits uh, are now changed in terms of their shape, enable them to bind to the oxygen easier, so a second oxygen molecule will then bind to one of the subunits easier than the first one did. So then that will cause a further change in the subunit structures, and therefore increasing the affinity even higher up. And we said at this point, uh, the hemoglobin is about 50% saturated because, as you can see, uh, two out of the four subunits are now bound to the oxygen. Then, uh, because of the increased affinity, then the third oxygen will bind even quicker and even e more easily. So then, um, reaching a 75% saturation here. And then finally, it will then, because the, it's, it's already got a chain structure in terms of binding uh, to the next oxygen even more easily, then finally we got 100% saturation here. And the difference between these few different stages is number one, the subunit structures are changed gradually, uh, and at each stage the subunits can bind to oxygen even more easily compared to the one before. Uh, so in some sense you can almost think of it as the, the, the second oxygen was bound to the hemoglobin quicker in a shorter time than the first one, the third one was bound quicker than the second one, and the fourth one was bound even quicker than the third one. And as you can see, it's a double-edged uh, arrow because this whole process can be reversed. 
uh, when the hemoglobin reaches some of the tissues or the organs where it needs to release the oxygen for the tissues to use uh, in respiration. So in summary, here we've got the structure of the hemoglobin, which is a large globular conjugate protein. It's globular in terms of its shape, and it's conjugated because it's got the heme group uh, bound to it. And we say that there are four heme groups in the four subunits within one hemoglobin, so therefore each hemoglobin can bind to four oxygen molecules in total. And they show something called positive cooperativity, which means when the oxygen is bound to the to one of the segments of the hemoglobin, it will change its shape, allowing for the next uh, oxygen to bind even more easily, increasing the hemoglobin's affinity. And that is a brief summary of how it actually works. You can see how the subunit structure are gradually changed over time as each oxygen molecule was bound to it, ultimately reaching 100% saturation and that noting that this whole process is reversible as well.